Viewer discretion is advised. 863 suddenly becomes violent and attempts to break his restraints. Director Mandeville activates the shock collar. You! You! I'll kill you! You're the pervert! Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-1788. SCP-1788, also known as the adults, is a process, treatment, or other means of biological transformation. A prepubescent human being subjected to 1788 will become an instance of SCP-1788-1. On reaching adulthood, 178-1s will display a predatory behavior towards prepubescent humans. Typically, they will settle in a large urban center. There, they will take on a form of white-collar employment and begin tracking prepubescents in the area. However, they will usually not seek employment in a job where they would work directly with children. Presumably, this is to limit suspicion. Approximately once every six months, a 1788 1 instance will attempt to abduct one of the subjects that it has been tracking. Once captured, it takes them to a remote or otherwise unobserved location, where it is subjected to the 1788 process and turned into an instance of 1788 1. Little information has been gathered from captured instances of 1788 1. These 1788-1 instances are of above average intelligence and show extremely strong resistance to compulsion, coercion, torture, and other forms of information extraction. More detailed observations are difficult to make as instances refuse to take standardized exams. In addition, they become aggressive and uncooperative when forced to answer questions, demonstrating an unwillingness or inability to comply with tests. To date, every instance has also shown signs of malignant narcissism and psychopathy. They generally demonstrate a complete lack of empathy, while also showing keen psychological insight. For these reasons, among others, unauthorized contact with 1788-1 instances is strictly forbidden. Individual instances generally do not voluntarily gather or interact with one another, except for the purposes of mating. In fact, when two or more instances are placed in the same environment, they typically fight for dominance. This behavior is not gender-linked, in that females and males will fight one another in addition to their own genders. In a mixed gender group, there will be only one dominant individual, who may be male or female. Captured instances are housed separately to minimize damage. Multiple instances have been seen in the same general urban area but never in a ratio greater than 1 to 100,000 normal humans. Their gestation period is approximately 40 weeks, which is roughly the same as humans. Their offspring are genetically indistinguishable from normal humans and are not considered anomalous. However, as they are prime candidates for undergoing the SCP-1788 process, their capture or termination is to be considered high priority second only to the termination of 1788-1 instances. According to the 1788-1 anatomy report, it is extremely difficult to distinguish a clothed 1788-1 from a normal adult human. Individuals show variation as expected from gender and ethnicity, but share certain characteristics in common. 1788-1 individuals appear to be obese, within the range of 150 to 200 kilograms when fully grown. 1788-1 instances have larger than average eyes, though not enough to appear abnormal on casual inspection. Their sweat contains high levels of potassium and copper, though still within the normal range for an adult human. While they seem normal on the outside, their internal anatomy has been altered extensively. 1788-1 instances, long bones and cranium have been reinforced with several heavy metals, and their muscle fibers have been interwoven with structures resembling carbon nanotubes. This gives them increased durability, strength, and speed that measures well above the human baseline. 1788-1 instances possess backup organs and systems for most of their body's vital processes. For example, they have a secondary heart, which is located lower in the torso. This heart can work in tandem with the primary heart to more efficiently circulate blood. 
Additionally, it can also function independently as necessary. Certain blood vessels have complex valve structures, allowing instances to close off blood flow to damaged limbs and other areas to prevent excessive blood loss. Other organ systems also have two or three redundant backups that can take over in the event of failure within a primary organ. 1788-1 instances also possess a secondary brain located in the upper torso and protected by its own skeletal structure similar in construction to the rib cage. Currently, the exact function of this brain is unknown, but it is known that this brain can continue to function even in the event of the destruction of the primary brain. This phenomenon was demonstrated in an incident where a team of agents were able to lure a 1788 1 instance into the range of a sniper, who was able to destroy most of the instance's head, including the entirety of the main brain. However, the instance still displayed full mobility and partial lethality, disabling two agents, one fatally, at close range. It is unknown how the instance was still able to sense the agents with most of its primary sense organs destroyed. Research is ongoing. The final difference in gross anatomy is the appearance of a second pair of arms, located directly below the main pair. These have apparently equal strength and dexterity to the upper pair and 1788-1 instances are apparently capable of using all four arms simultaneously. When not actively hunting, instances hold the lower pair folded closely to their sides, where they are largely concealed by natural bulk. When hidden in this manner, it is virtually impossible to distinguish a clothed instance of 1788-1 from a normal, obese human with the only exception being upon close inspection. Below is an interview log between Site Director Mandeville and SCP-1788-1-863. The 863 was restrained and fitted with an electroshock collar for this interview. Please state your name for the record. <laughs> I don't need a name. Names are for children. The driver's license and other materials on your person identify you as... Is that your name? That's my childhood name. I don't need it now then I'll refer to you as 863. Call me what you like, just don't call me late for supper. <laughs> you were found by our agents outside an elementary school, and documents in your car and apartment include multiple photographs of the victim, taken without their knowledge. 863 suddenly becomes violent and attempts to break his restraints. You, you, I'll kill you. You're the pervert, you. If you're not 863, then why are you observing human? 863 stops, attempting to break restraints. Do you think they're the victim? <laughs> I can't believe we came from you. Explain what you mean by that, 863. 863 does not speak. Director Mandeville activates the shock collar. 863 does not visibly react. That's what I mean. You think you can hurt me with that? You're a failure, doctor. You don't even know what you are. Would you care to elaborate, 863? You wonder why your scientists haven't found any anomalous implants in our bodies, why we have no surgical scars, why our genes are pure, unmodified human genes. Because we are human, doctor. Your x-rays don't look very human. We don't look like you. We're not failures. We're not children. You regard us as children? You still look like children. You aren't finished. What do you... You're stunted. Incomplete. You're like the amphibian that grows up to breathe water instead of air. The eggs I watched. They must hatch into us. They need to be finished. So, you abduct them to complete their... Metamorphosis? We don't need companionship. We don't live like you, in herds. Each one of us knows what we need to do. And each of us is capable of it. And what do you want us to do? grow up or die. <laughs> Containment of SCP-1788 is currently impossible, but the Foundation currently has seven instances of 1788-1 imprisoned in Armed Biological Area 223. Contact with these instances is strictly forbidden outside of approved experiments. Each instance is to be housed in a separate humanoid containment cell. 
Any suspected instances of 1788-1 are to be reported immediately to Armed Biological Area 223 Command. Personnel are not to engage suspected instances and should retreat immediately upon an encounter. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.